Hey bird tubers, happy beer fun Friday. I'm going to do a uh, beer review tonight. So some of you may have had this before, some maybe not. This is my nice uh, brew tubers bottle opener that I got. So there you have it. So this is the uh, Dogfish Head 90 minute. IPA, IPA. I mean, as you can see, it is just clear as a bell. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I mean, wow. I'm telling me if you guys haven't tried this before. This is absolutely outstanding. I've been uh, watching the Doghead Fish videos and absolutely love them and this beer. Wow, it's out of this world. Look how clear that is. It's 9% 9 alcohol, 90 IBUs, um, just absolutely outstanding. It's a little pricey, but it's worth buying a four-pack and giving this a try. It is outstanding, and uh, you know I really want to really want to try their uh, 120 as well. It's harder to find that one, but I definitely want to give that one a shot. So. I give this one, if I were to score out of a 10, I easily give this one a 9 out of 10. It's outstanding. So, once I finish up this one, I have a few other home brews I'm going to review, so just stay tuned. Thanks. Alright, I just reviewed that IPA. So now I'm going to uh, review one of my home brews. This is a uh, Centennial Blonde that I got off Home Brew Talk. There you go. You can, I mean, you can see this one is uh, it's a little cloudier, but it's still pretty clear. A pretty decent head on it. it. Smells good. That's a good beer too. So go to homebrewtalk.com and this is a Centennial Blonde. And you know this one I definitely give out of 10, I don't know, I would give this one, this is a pretty good session beer, you know, it's uh, a little over 5% alcohol, but I would probably give this one a good 8 out of 10, so I would highly recommend this one too. Definitely enjoy this beer. So uh, I'm going to go back and watch a Michigan State game, and I'll be back, and then I will probably review my uh, oatmeal stout. So hang in there. Usually the most dangerous guy on the floor in an out-of-bound situation is the person taking it out. Here's Marble. He'll fire! Alright, 
I just cut to some Michigan State photo. Go uh, Spartans. There we go. Alright, so I have reviewed the dogfish. You know, 90 minute IPA, which I gave a 9 out of 10. I have no label on this one. This was my uh, Centennial Blonde, which I gave an 8 out of 10. I definitely love this one. This was an all grain that I did. And now, here's one more. This one I'm really unsure about right now. So we'll see how this one does. This is a uh, oatmeal stout that I did. So you can see the uh, carbonation is uh, kind of so-so on it. Definitely smells good though. This is my uh, third all grain that I've done. I got to say, it's pretty good though. It's got a nice, really rich, malty taste to it. So, I would say uh, this one, I mean, you can kind of see it's got uh, pretty good lacing on the glass. It smells good. This is my first all grain oatmeal stout. So I gotta say, this one's probably got a good. I'll give this one a, a, a seven or maybe a seven half out of ten. I'll definitely brew this one again. This one and the Centennial Blonde are both all grains that I've done. I give these both high marks. And I'll definitely brew both these again. So, again, my Spartans pulled out. They were down by they were down by ten in that basketball game, and they came back and won. So, I'm hoping they knock out. You know, they get a number two or a number three seed in the NCAA tournament, and I'm hoping they kick some ass. So, Friday nights. Beer Fun Friday is all I can say to you guys. And Friday nights, uh, I bowl on Friday nights, so I gotta say I've drank, <laughs> I've drank a good amount tonight. I've done a beer review on three beers, so once again, we'll swing back here. Doghead fish or dogfish head? I'm sorry. This beer rocks. I really want to try their 120. I'm sure that's good. The Centennial Blonde I got home from homebrewtalk.com absolutely rocks too. That one may be my first 10 gallon batch I do sometime in the future. Quite honestly, this uh, oatmeal stout I absolutely love too. So maybe that'll be a good uh, 10 gallon batch I do in the future too. So. All I can say is happy Beer Fun Friday. I'm going to break off to some uh, spin plate project I've done. I'm going to break off to show you guys the hard cider I've made. I've dry hopped. And again, happy Beer Fun Friday. I hope you guys had a good Friday night like I've had. And I will see you guys next week. Cheers. Okay, here you have it. Here's an update on my uh, stir plates. See, so I got my rheostat here where I can uh, turn it up. Whoop, I just disconnected it. So let me click this guy off. Oh, yeah, my electrical connection just came off. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. 
Okay, sorry, I reconnected everything. Let me switch it back on here. So, there it is at its lowest speed. And then, see if I can crank this up without... See, I think the uh, high speed on this is probably too high. Maybe for a 2 liter batch I would need to get it up higher than that, but you can see it's really just stirring the heck out of it. And I'm sure I would never need that much. Let me dial this back down. See if it slows down a little bit. But uh, <laughs> it kind of looks like to me Maybe uh, I got these little uh, 8 ohm resistors. Maybe I'll add a couple of these in to slow it down because uh, there's really no need for it to go that fast. Let me start it up again at the, at the lower speed. Maybe it won't be so crazy. But you can still see it's uh, spinning it pretty pretty fast. But I want to show you guys what I think the ultimate problem was with mine. I think it was a magnet problem. What I ended up doing was... I don't know if I can get enough light for these. But I was only trying to use one magnet on, it, on each side. And maybe that was the problem. So what I did was I have... I bought these magnets. You know that there's a whole bunch of little ones here. There you go, there it focused a little bit better. And so what I ended up doing was I just kept stacking these until it almost touched the glass. So I ended up going four high. And so now the magnets are a lot close, almost touching the glass. So I think that's why uh, I finally got this thing working. But like I said, I'll, I'll probably rig in at least uh, one resistor, if not two. And... Uh, you know, see if that doesn't uh, help this out. Because uh, again, I, I think it's probably just spinning it too fast. I don't know. You guys can let me know what you think. Uh, whether that's too fast or if that's about the same as what your guys' does. Um, but that's definitely got a pretty good stir on. And maybe with Ward it won't be so bad because uh, the mixture might be a little bit thicker, so maybe it won't, wouldn't stir quite this crazy. But I just wanted to give you guys an uh, update on this, and then I'll do another shot when I finally get this in a little bit nicer, maybe put it in a box or do something a little bit neater with it. But I just wanted to give you guys an update on this because it's been a while since I mentioned anything at all about the stir plate I made. But... Quite honestly, at the very least, even with it like this, I could probably still do uh, a yeast starter with this this way if I had to. Okay, and here we go again on a cider update. Uh, on my homebrew Wednesday, you guys saw I dry hopped my cider. Um, so here it is, uh, two days later. You can see the uh, hop layer at the top. And... Uh, you know, so there you go. I probably won't do another up. Uh, maybe a homebrew Wednesday next week. I'll do another update on this. And you can see it's actually uh, pretty cold in my uh, basement right now. So this is sitting at 64 degrees. So that's where you have it. So I'm going to dry hop this for 7 to 10 days. So, you know, about another week. Uh, so either... Homebrew Wednesday or Beer Fun Friday next week. I'll, uh, I still haven't decided whether I'm going to transfer this into another carboy or if I'm going to go ahead and bottle it. Um, let me know what you guys think about that, You know whether you think it should be bottled at that point or if I should just go ahead and rack this into another carboy and just let it mellow out for a few weeks before I bottle it.